Hi everyone, it's Bacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. In the past, I have done a video in regards to the Yamaha AG03 USB mixing console. I've done a review and talked about it and if you want to view it, you can just click here. As I mentioned in that video, that I'll be doing a series of videos of using the Yamaha AG03 USB mixer to record a song. Now, when I purchased the Yamaha AG03, it came with Steinberg's um, Cubase AI, which is a limited uh, uh, version of their Cubase uh, version 8. And I'm going to use that software to record a song, and I'm going to do a series of videos on it. So I thought the first step to do is to get the Yamaha AG03 connected and set up in Cubase AI, so we have all of that um, interfacing all out of the out of the way, so we can get on and starting recording some tracks. So without any, any further ado, I will walk you through and guide you how I'm going to set up the Yamaha AG03 in Cubase AI. Well, I will assume that you have your Yamaha AG03 USB mixing console connected and drivers installed. You only need a USB cable to it because USB not only provides power, it also has all of the audio communication. If you are using a different audio interface, I will assume that you have it connected and drivers, if any, installed. Running Cubase AI, we have our front startup page. I'm just going to select acoustic guitar and vocal template to do the device setting up demonstration. Now if you are confronted with this uh, missing ports error screen, all it simply means that the input connections are not assigned to any physical inputs, like in this case trying to connect to my laptop's microphone inputs. You can simply ignore this. But once you set up the project, you will never see this message again until you change your audio interface again. And here we are, we have Cubase AI project desktop on our screen. So the first thing we need to do is to set up the device, the actual hardware device in Cubase AI project. To do that, we go to devices, device setup. From here, we, be, we are able to select all of our ASIO drivers. In my case, as you can see, I have quite a few drivers installed, like my uh, Personas AudioBox 1818 VSL driver, uh, my Behringer FCA 1616, and so on. And I also have my Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO driver. You can select switch, so it switches. We also have information here. We can see our input and output latency and the sampling rate. We're just going to leave everything to its default. Next, we're going to look at the Yamaha actual USB driver to assign its in physical inputs and outputs. As we can see, in my case, the Yamaha AG03 has two physical inputs, one and two, and two physical outputs, one left and right. To open up the control panel of the uh, ASIO settings, we can cl click on the control panel and now we are able to set some of the more detailed settings. A lot of times you can leave them as they are, but I will demonstrate a few things and explain what they basically mean. The most important one is the buffer size. This determines how small chunks of data is being transmitted and received from the actual buffer of the hardware. The lower the samples, the and faster the data throughput. That means lower latency, because it doesn't have to wait a big chunks of data to be processed. 
We can click and select different rates of buffer sizes. It's a really good idea when you are recording to start and test your buffer size from the smallest and move up until you get a clear signal. A lot of times it could be CPU intensive when we are selecting 64 or 96 samples for our buffer size. If that's the case and you are hearing lots of pops and clicks and distortion in your audio being recorded, just move up to the next one until you get a clear recording. But when you're actually mixing down and playing, latency is no longer an issue. So you can actually turn your buffer sample size all the way up to the maximum 2048. What this means is that the CPU will give big chunks of data to the audio interface to convert the digital to analog and then go about do all of the other things that it needs to do like take care of VST plugin, memories and a whole heap of other things. That means your system will run much better when you are mixing or mastering your song. So for now, since we are recording, I'm going to leave it 96 because I think last time that's what I tested with to have a good signal without any pops and clicks with, you know, just over 10 millisecond latency. The next option is our sample rate. By default, it's 44.1 kilohertz, but Yamaha AG03 can go up to 192 kilohertz. For now, I'm going to leave 44.1, but I do recommend at least 48 kilohertz of sampling rate for all your projects. So that concludes step one. So we now have Cubase AI know and understand where are the physical inputs and the outputs of the audio interface. Let's click OK to close the window. Next what we need to do is assign virtual inputs to actual physical inputs. That's step number two. To be able to do that we go to again devices but this time we select VSD connections. As we can see in this dialog, we have virtual buses or virtual inputs and outputs that at the moment not assigned to any physical device ports, which we will assign. And we also have the output. So to assign a stereo input virtual bus, we can select here. We have our AG03 input 1 as left and AG03 input 2 as the right. So when we are recording a stereo signal like the line level input for our keyboards or drum machines and synthesizers, then we can use stereo in as our virtual bus for input. For mono in 1, which is a default text, you can select channel 1 and for mono in 2 we can select channel 2 but to make it more labeled more easy to understand and see we can easily double click and rename this to mic select double click call it guitar so now when we are assigning virtual inputs to our tracks we can either select mic or guitar or stereo in. Now you probably wonder why would you need like the VSD connections, why wouldn't you assign each track to a physical input of your audio interface? Well because of flexibility, being able to assign virtual inputs that means if you do change your audio interface all you need to do is come here and reassign your inputs to virtual buses then the project is no longer um, in conflict or if you pass your project to someone else which may not we may have a different audio interface all they need to do is reassign their VST connection to the physical audio interface and they don't have to worry about which track connects to which physical output let's assume we want to add a, a bass guitar input which is fine a mono input let's call it the bass guitar input 
and this one we can still assign it to number two. So even though physically we're going to be plugging in our uh, rhythm guitar or solo guitar and the bass guitar at the same physical input connection on our audio interface, the second channel on our Yamaha AG03, we can assign different names for them to make it easier to understand where everything is connected and how it's all connected. So if in the future you do have a different audio inter interface which has more physical inputs, then all you need to do is, is assign the bass virtual bus to maybe AG303 or some other audio interface. Having a look at the outputs, again the same thing. So we have stereo output left and right assigned already automatically to left and right of the Yamaha. But if we had an audio interface which had more than two outputs, we can create a bus and assign them to different outputs. Let's say a separate headphone output, headphone mix. We can create them here. And that concludes step two. And we move on to step three. And the final stage of setting up our audio interface devices in Cubase AI is assigning our tracks to our virtual inputs. As you know, the position of the track, one for acoustic guitar and two for vocals, there's no significance how they are laid out and compared to which channel on our audio interface the microphones are. That's where virtual input uh, buses come into play. For acoustic guitar, we have channel two, or we don't even care what channel they're on now because we've already done that. We just need to select the guitar virtual bus, input bus. There we go, we select it into a guitar. So now, track number one is assigned to guitar virtual bus, and guitar virtual bus is assigned to physical input number two on our Yamaha AG03. Let's have a look at the vocals. Again, we edit. This time, we assign it to the microphone. Close it. And it's done. So just to test it out, I'm just going to turn the microphone on on my uh, Yamaha AG03, which is on channel 1. And I'm just going to turn on monitor mode. And we should be able to hear our... Here we go. Now you can hear me talking, and I can see the levels going up. And if you want to record something on that vocal track, you can click enable the record option so it's now armed we click record and now we are recording our vocal track which is coming from the microphone connected to the AG03 channel 1 all the way through the VST connections and into our track and there we go so we now have recorded a track. Well, that's it for now. Just to recap, basically we have our audio interface physically connected to our PC or laptop. We went into devices and selected the correct driver for it. And we made sure the right inputs and outputs were available. Then we went to VST connections and created or assigned virtual buses input and output buses to our physical input output connections and then came into the tracks and assigned each of the track to those virtual input buses. If you have any further questions regarding to setting up your device feel free to comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. But I have to remind you that as you know Cubase is not my main DAW and I will do my best to fulfill any com comments you might have. I might have to, you know, I'm learning as I'm going as well and passing on the information to you. And until next time, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great time making music. Cheerio.